Hey, Jason Vivash here from JL Vivash Custom Wood Floors in Paris, Ontario. I'm here to talk to you today about a crazy restoration job that we recently completed. So I received a phone call in October of 2016 from a lady whose parents had uh, undergone a terrible fire in the basement. Uh, she thought that all the floors needed to be replaced, uh, so she had been trying to find someone to come out and help her. But uh, it was a couple months since the fire and they wanted to pull all the floors out, so I had to get there pretty quickly for my assessment. After my original assessment, I agreed that these floors needed to come out. There was a lot of water damage uh, from putting the fire out and these thin floors were buckling everywhere. In the main floor, the floor that she was most concerned about was very intricate in the dining room. It was 200 square feet. So first we had to document this job. We had to take pics and measurements and actually remove samples of the original floor before it was demolished. Okay, so let's uh, take a closer look at the sample here that I have to recreate. So here is the piece that I was able to salvage from that original floor. It's comprised of three main components. There's the four corner blocks that are 12 inch square. Uh, there's the border, which is 12 inch wide. And then all the field is comprised of these 12 by 12 inch blocks. Uh, something you'll notice right away is this predominant quarter inch feature strip that runs throughout the pattern. Now this is something that really complicates things, obviously. I knew uh, when taking apart uh, some of the pieces of the floor that this quarter inch feature strip is actually glued to the, the pieces beside it. And these pieces in the border are two inch wide and then the pieces in the field are only an inch and five eighths wide. Uh, it's still the same quarter inch feature running through everything. The strips of oak are narrower in the field. So uh, I knew that I could rip and cut all these little pieces of the feature strip and assemble, but I thought there must be an easier way. Uh, it was then that I reached out to some of the people in the industry and Len Hall gave me some great advice. He thought that uh, I could take some planks of face-on material and, and uh, make them the exact dimension needed and then laminate, glue this sandwich together and then when dry, rip and then I could end up with this quarter sawn pieces that I need to cut this pattern. So we played with that in the shop and it was a huge success. It saved us a lot of time. And uh, so let's uh, head out to the shop and see how we did all this. So starting out with the lamination, I knew right away that we were gonna have to be very accurate. So I lost the tape measure and I grabbed my caliper. This piece from the field here is exactly two inches wide. The feature strip is exactly quarter inch and the oak on either side is seven eighths of an inch. So remember, we are dimensioning this seven eighths material. We're starting with rough lumber, taking it through the resaw bandsaw. We're planing it down, starting to get close to seven eighths. And then we're taking it over and sanding it on the sander with 80 grit, the whole time checking with our caliper and getting within decimal zero one millimeters. So quite accurate. When we glue this together and laminate it, we have to be exactly two inch. If we're not, all of our quarter inch feature strips won't line up in the pattern. I'll show you how we're gonna glue this up. So in the last step, we took it from uh, rough lumber down to this fine sanded, smooth lumber. So we have our, our seven eighths strips here and our quarter inch feature strip. I took a good quality PVA adhesive and rolled uh, both sides, took it over with some uh, good quality parallel clamps. We were able to glue up four sections at a time and after that's dry, we take it over to the ripping station. Okay, so now we have our face on glued up sandwiches that we're gonna rip. So we rip that through and we end up with quarter sawn pieces that we're going to cut to make our pattern. I wanted to end up with 3 8 material on the floor, so we actually ripped these to 7 16 and then we'll sand them down on site. Okay, let's move over to uh, the cutting. Okay, so we finally have all of our laminated rips with our quarter inch feature strip, all quarter sawn. So what I did was I dedicated a miter saw to each piece. Using the original pieces we pulled out from the floor, 
digital angle finder and the caliper, I was able to re replicate the identical size. We screwed a stop block in on the saw and we start cutting. And again, we recheck about every 10 pieces. And after that, we're ready for assembly. Okay, so now that we have all of our small pieces, we're ready for assembly. So I got a sheet of plywood and I drew the pattern out. And then I screwed down some stop blocks on the top and the bottom, just to make sure we assembled it nice and tight. So we take all of our pieces and we start assembling. Once that's assembled, we will tape it using packing tape, slide it out, and it's ready to go to the job site. We repeat the same process with all the 12 inch squares for the field. It's good, we're ready to go to site. Here we are out in Guelph on site uh, with this crazy restoration floor. So this is the finished product. They're almost done this house. Uh, they still have rads to put on and cover plates. Some of the rooms aren't quite done. So the fire originated right under this floor. When I came and looked into the basement, all of the floor joists were charred like logs on fire. Uh, the underside was black and charred and you actually couldn't walk in this area here. It was really soft and spongy. We knew right away that this would be a full replacement. First, I came into this room. I tried to remove some of these uh, 5 16 face nailed pieces and they were literally crumbling apart. Uh, they were full of moisture, uh, the subfloor was charred and, and wet. So what I decided to do was get the sawzall and cut a complete corner section out. That would give me the corner blocks, the border detail, and then all of the center field squares. So in addition to that sample, I had to take some really precise measurements on the floor itself and the room that it had to fit in. I noticed right away that the field where it met up to the border, those pieces were not actually 12 inches wide like the rest of the field. So that led me to believe that this floor was manufactured somewhere else and then just fit into this room. So there's probably other floors somewhere in North America just like this. So when I made this floor, I decided to go a little bit thicker. Uh, this is 3 8 material that I made it out of. I knew that there was going to be a lot of irregularities uh, in the thickness and the subfloor. So we made it a little bit thicker and then I was going to sand it flat with the Norton Red Heat uh, uh, on my belt and on my trio and bring it down nice and flat. Uh, the other thing that I had to do was build it up because the rest of the flooring in here is 3 quarter inch thick. So we built it up with a 3 8 Baltic birch. So in addition to the dining room floor, we also had 1,200 square feet of flooring to replace in the rest of the house. So on the second floor here, every room had a different border style. And as you can see in the hallway here, we have a double feature strip. So we used the same East Indian rosewood for the feature strip. And the other thing that you'll notice is a really heavy quarter sawn material. That was one of our biggest challenges, was finding something that was so quartered. And we found out right away that Graf Custom Hardwood was the ideal choice for that. Now let's check out some of those bedrooms. So in this room, we had a fairly simple log cabin style border that came out nine inches from the wall. So in bedroom two, we have mitered corners, again coming out nine inches from the wall. So in the master bedroom, we had a really interesting woven corner with the double one inch feature strip made out of the same material. So the client was really particular about her corners. So we actually had to make a mock-up of each corner to get that approved before installation. Well, that's it for my crazy restoration job. It's one of the most complicated floors I've ever done. Over 12,000 pieces in this 200 square foot room. Thanks for watching. If you want to check out any more of my work, look me up on Instagram under JLVVash.